Welcome back. Thank you very much for uh, staying with us here on SABC News. You're watching uh, the late edition with myself, Flo and Mbali. ANC President Sir Ramaphosa has uh, described uh, the late former party president and freedom fighter, Oar Tambo, as the glue that continues to bind the ANC together. He says if uh, it were not for the dedication shown by the likes of Tambo, who spent years in exile, South Africa may not have realized its democracy in 1994. Today marks 30 years since the passing on of the struggle icon to reflect on the legacy of O.R. Tambo. We are now joined by advocate Sipo Mandula, a pan-Africanist, human rights activist and researcher at the Tabombeki African School of Public and International Affairs at uh, UNISA. Advocate, a pleasure to see you again. Uh, thanks very much for being with us here on SABC News. Evening, my sister in Jambo, Africa, to the late edition viewers. A very important day in the historical calendar. Yeah, let's talk about that. Let's reflect on the 30 years since uh, the passing of uh, Oar Tambo. Uh, we heard President Sil Ramaphosa today at the wreath length ceremony, which we're playing here on the screen, uh, saying that, you know, uh, he, the, late, uh, the late leader was the glue that kept uh, the party together. Does that still sort of, does, is that a reflection of, of, of what the ANC is today? That, that's pretty much an indictment and a sort of, you know, acknowledgement that, that perhaps things aren't as, as he would have wanted them to be. No, correctly, Flo. And I, I, one will say that uh, for now, if we have to take this narrative of today without looking at the past, at the role of Oliver Tambo uh, after 1960, Shaville massacre, uh, going exile, uh, going to set up ANC missions, uh, going to set up the peace process. Uh, it is important that we don't have to reflect on the 29 years of what I will call the weaknesses, challenges, yeah. um, some of the um, uh, infiltration, uh, obstruction of uh, the people's struggle, because Oliver Tambo stood for three things that I think the viewers must know. Mm. Uh, being the teacher and a lawyer, he stood for, for the people, yeah. meaning anything that we do in the present moment, it must be for our people. The solidarity was getting from outsiders. It was not through conditional love or conditional means. Mm. The issue of our Tambo also, it is important when we have to put the context of constitutional democracy vis-a-vis -vis parliamentary democracy. Yeah. That Oliver Tambo stood for those values. But if you see today, we see the, uh, the breach, we see the breakdown of constitutional values in this country and across the uh, African continent. And I think what another point I wanted to raise was his linkage, connection of his struggle to the broader continental struggles. Because yeah. I think when we have to reflect what happens in South Africa, we need to know even our neighbors mm. are facing the same challenges which I don't think that President Ramaphosa of what is becoming rhetoric yeah. of poverty, inequality, unemployment, it has already passed a sermon. It must be said that it is no longer poverty, inequality, but corruption, uh, ignorance, yes. illiteracy level at the political level, mm -hmm. economical level, it, cultural you know, you, you level. Seem, you seem to be pointing at you know, some sort of a comparison between yeah. the, the current crop of ANC leadership and what perhaps we, we had and saw in the time of O.R. Tambo. Is it fair to, to make uh, that, that, that sort of uh, a comparison, you know, in, in this day and age? Because, you know, one can also argue that, you know, the struggles that were faced then are different to the struggles that were faced now. And of course, not trying to, yeah. uh, you know, uh, uh, sort of pretend that corruption yeah. is okay. But, you know, I'm not justifying it in any way. But are the challenges not, you know, different? Um, is it fair to make those sort of comparisons? No, no, it is fair because historiography, for us to talk about the death of Oliver Tam, we have to start with the birth. Yeah. And we have to start with the initiation, political initiation, what Oliver Tambo regional Kaisana stood for. And when you look back, uh, my sister, is that you find that the question of the leadership is very important. Uh, he was very clear on uh, articulating the ANC policies mm -hmm. outside the country. Uh, I read one letter he wrote to Emperor Haile Selassie in 1964. It's almost marking 59 years of that letter, how he spoke about the people's struggle. I still want to center the leadership and the seventh leadership of Uwar Tambo. Mm. And uh, it is the matter that Oliver Tambo passed or got a stroke in 1989, when they were about to finalize 
the Organization of African Unity Harare Declaration. Why is it so important? He was not part of the Kodesa I, Kodesa II. So it, one does not even say to him, he, there is an indictment on him. I want to defend his legacy and yeah. his knowledge and his thinking. And the narrative that Oliver Tambo was in exile, was enjoying the perks of the UN, he was not part of the struggle. That's mm -hmm. very wrong. Mm -hmm. on, when I was coming here, I spoke to one of the senior ambassadors, uh, uh, Ambassador Wedi Lentlap. And we, we, we have touched on the issue how Oliver Tambo, when the freedom fighters died in exile, mm. he will attend their funeral as a leader. Mm. Secondly, he was the longest serving president of the ANC from being a secretary general right. to the president. Yes, we can compare uh, President Ramaphosa. He was a secretary general of the ANC before. He's the president. And when he talks of the glue, I feel that it is no longer a glue. Mm. It is either a T-Pex that they're using. Yeah, but what's missing? <coughs> so maybe to the point that I want to make then is so what's missing there are then missing now? Links that there, because if you're saying that, you know, this glue is gone. It's gone. Why have we lost that? Is the current leadership that uh, problematic in that they cannot be uh, the, the glue? I mean, if, if I'm if I'm saying the glue is no longer there and I'm not being the glue, it's, it's actually an indictment. No, no, no. It is, it is, it is an uh, indictment. Look at the glue from a young age. If you, you don't have a functioning youth league, and Oliver Tambo was a member of the Youth League yeah, in yeah. 1949 with A. Pim Da, with uh, Mbede. So I go to the youth leadership again. Mm. There's not that glue. You look at how Oliver Tambo set up what they called Emancipation Commission in the ANC, mm. the role of women in the ANC. Yeah. Your top seven that we see now, it's just a mere ceremonial or a window screen uh, when you look at the leadership of the governing party. You look at international relations, how we position ourselves at AU level, at the G7, mm -hmm. at the G20. Mm -hmm. uh, Oliver Tambo will stood before the UN. He will be given the red carpet as the ANC president, not as the apartheid president. So the issue that is missing now, corruption has crypted in post-1997, 98. Right. Uh, we can say post Nelson Mandela's presidency, we started to see looting and plundering of the state resource, which is the people's resource. Is it, is it fair to say that uh, perhaps liberators should not then become the leaders of those that uh, they, they liberated? I mean, yeah. we've, we've seen examples of this through, throughout yeah. Africa, yeah. where, Correct. you yeah. know, your, your job ends Correct. at being yeah. uh, uh, the yeah. liberator. Yeah. And then now, you know, when you are in a position yeah. of power, mm. where perhaps mm. it should have been handed to yeah. uh, elsewhere or someone else, that maybe it becomes a little bit uh, problematic. But, you know, one assumes that because you liberated us, you would yeah. be great leaders. Is that a problematic narrative? I mean, we've seen it. Uh, play out in numerous countries in, on, on our continent as no, well? No, definitely. Liberation movements are not messiahs, are not angels. Uh, lib liberation movements have to transition with agency and time mm. and have to have what I called earlier intergenerational leadership skills, have to be meticulous, have to be clear, have to be thinkers. And as you said, we have aging leaders, we have senior elders who are sitting as presidents from your Cameroon to Uganda. I mean, there are many leaders who are sitting into power because of that value of being liberators. But why are we looking at liberation only without looking at the unity of Africa, the unity of the ANC? They've been talking about the unity of the ANC. Oliver Tambo stood on it when today I was told that the cultural knowledge that Oliver Tambo brought on the spear and the logo of the ANC, yeah. of the wheel and of the spear, it was a unity that is missing. So you don't have leaders who are serving unity of purpose. They are not dealing with agency. They are not dealing with the people's issues. Mm. They are more into their personal issues. They are more into their family matters. They are more even into grand standing. So you have leaders who... I will say to you, Oliver Tambo warned us about those leaders. Yeah. About and, the, and what do you, you know, think, you know, it's, it's a, a possibly an unfair question yeah. to you, advocate, but what do you suppose you would have thought, you know, of the current state of the ANC? And I thought it was interesting, you know, as yeah. a legal scholar yourself, you reflected yeah. on him not just as a leader, but also yeah. a lawyer and a legal uh, a scholar. Legal mind, yeah. yeah. So, 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 so bearing all of that yeah. um, in mind, what, what are your thoughts about how, you know, 
what he would have thought about what's, what's happening. Currently. You know, what would have thought, it's a pity he had a stroke, like I said, in 1989, so yeah. he would not have observed and guided the constitutional drafting, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. so-called the sun's, the sunset clause. Yeah. Uh, he could not observe uh, the passing of Nelson Mandela. Uh, he will not have seen the passing of Veronica Sobukwe. Yeah. He will not have seen many leaders from Black Consciousness to the PAC who will have been a force of unity in the liberation of the uh, uh, people. Because like I said, he would have wanted to see the people's aspiration being fulfilled. Mm -hmm. He would have wanted the people's constitutional aspirations being fulfilled, their right to education, their right to health, the right to education. Because remember, he called Justice Albi Sachs to draft the constitutional principles yeah, yeah. of the country mm. and of the ANC. And that's where it is missing that he will have been worried about the constitutional democracy, the institutions supporting democracy. Why are they fading away? Why are they, are they, are they blinking? Why are they losing the contact with the ordinary people. He will have been concerned also about the leaders who have been in ANC for, for, for many years, but not guiding the young ones to understand. He will have been concerned about cultural diplomacy, that we should use it as another weapon of understanding political dynamics. Remember even with the conflict that happened in Russia and Ukraine, Oliver Tambo stood on the question of non-alignment movement but he didn't just say, I don't align for no reason or I will be non-aligned. Mm. So the challenge that we're having in this country also, it is the media independence also. You'll have been worried about the, the role of the media mm. because Oliver Tam was part of Radio Freedom. He know how to use the power of radio, the power of the television yeah. to communicate with the people. So you find interference on the a delay of appointment of the board sometimes. <laughs> you <laughs> find that there. <laughs> there are many issues that yeah. the current president of the ANC, if I can tell you, when I was listening to him... Uh, unfortunately, we, we're know. running out of time. So, so for me, Flo, yeah. is that we should not grandstand by philosophizing Oliver Tambo. We should be pragmatic, we should be theoretic, and we should be self-introspection, and yeah. we should not be ashamed of criticism. Because okay. I think, as a pan-Africanist, human rights defender. I'm not here to come and defend the ANC only, but I must critically assess the role of Oliver Tambo. But, and I said, this is the missing point. This is the missing glue. Yeah. All right, Advocate uh, Sipo Mandula, pleasure having you here in studio with us. Thanks very much uh, for weighing in on uh, this topic. Of course, uh, today marking 30, uh, 30 years since the passing of uh, struggle icon or Tambo. Thank you very much, Advocate.